to My Life, My Choice, coming to you, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of January, 2018, and the hour is 1 p.m. My name is Dr. Wendy Dearborn, and I will be your host for the next 60 minutes, perhaps longer, as is our normal MO. And my co-host is Olivia Lashley, coming to you live from London in the UK. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Today we're talking about are your life situations sending you important messages? And I think this is huge. But we'll get to that in just a moment. So, Olivia, darling, how are you? Happy New Year, darling. How are you? Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I was, uh, as you know, just getting myself together because... Um, I got a little distracted. But yes, yes, I'm fine. How are yes. you? My, I'm fine, darling. I'm fine. Um, you know, looking forward to um, a, 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 an amazing new year. It's already started out really well. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, you know, Liz, mm-hmm. as, as well can be. It's really actually started out really, really, really well. Um, mm. All things considered and all things, you know, it's just, it's good. It just feels really, really good. Okay, so okay. on that score... Yeah, it's all good. And so for yourself, any 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 major um, any major things that you you're you're wanting that you can share or want to share actually? Um no, I you, you know, I don't make like resolutions or um mm-hmm. Mind mm-hmm. I don't think that's what you're actually talking about. But no, I haven't said to myself, yes. okay, well I'm yes. going to do this this year or no, I ha- I haven't I haven't mm-hmm. at all. Um you know, just taking it as it comes, you know, when um, there are things that I would like to achieve. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, it would be great if it was this year. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. I'm not putting myself under any mm-hmm. pressure or anything. It's mm-hmm. For me, it's, mm-hmm. it's also experimenting, you know, mm-hmm. uh, tweaking little things that I do to see sort of like what yeah. produces results yeah. and the results that it produces. So, I mean, mind you, this has been an ongoing thing for I don't know how long, but, you know, it's every 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 year certain things come to me. And a lot of the things I actually say them, like I might say them on the show. I'll be thinking about them the day before and I'll say them on the show. And then I forget about them because mm-hmm, there's so much mm-hmm. that comes to me and things that mm-hmm. um, recently – that uh, what that I've sort of like been thinking about, and also like it's been boisted up by stuff that I've been listening to, um, that I really want to hone because I started it last year, mm-hmm. and it seems like well this year is the year to actually um, just hone it, continue doing what I'm doing, and, mm-hmm. and and hone it down a little bit. And as I said, usually you know I get things things that come through that I you know I I, I experiment with. This particular thing, it's it seems to be ongoing. It seems to be from year to year. It's always mm-hmm. there. And every year, mm-hmm. I suppose I'm kind of repeating myself, mm-hmm. every year it seems to, I seem to hone it more and more. So I'm interested to see what, um, what happens. What I mean, transpires. Yeah, 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 I'm actually really, really interested to see what happens. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And that's all about like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, manifesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and manifest. Because, yeah. You say that, and that's one of the things that um, I, um, as I sort of said to you the other day, you know, I think it was yesterday or whatever, that um, I've been asking questions. And guys, believe it, whether you believe it or not, I'm on my journey too, okay? So I've been asking questions about um, manifesting. And um, oh, as I said to you yesterday, Liv, I, I was stuck in traffic because, it was raining here and you know Las Vegas god bless it it's not designed for water i mean it's desert and they you know in shape or form they just don't design for loads and loads of water they just really don't so anyway on the i15 where the i15 and the 95 merge or you know converge um one side of the 15 was flooded i mean literally flooded so it had a go slow on on traffic Well, where I was, I wouldn't have known this because I was way back on the 95 somewhere, just crawling along and getting really irate, might I add. I really started, because I'm like, I I left early because they've got the computer show in town and it's right at the intersection where I go. And, you know, this usually the first day people don't know where they're going and yada, 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 all this sort of jazz. So, um, 
I started getting really peeved, you know. I'm in the car and I'm getting peeved and it was raining and it was grey and it was cold. And I, I started getting peeved and then I heard in my head, um, use your time wisely. And then I got fixed. Because <laughs> I'm like, use my time wisely. What am I going to do in the car? You know, what, what am I going to... And then it dawned on me there was this, this, um, there was this book that I was listening to. And um, in, in listening to the book, no, there was a book that I had been listening to. And then I decided to re-listen to it. And, you know, Liv, I've listened to this book no less, and I really mean this, no less than 20 times, the material pertaining to this book. And I started hearing all this sort of information that I, I'm like, well, where did this come from? Where was I the last, I don't know, 30 times that I've listened to the book? Where was I? And then not only that, some very pointed questions I had posed to my higher self, to the universe, to God, whatever floats the boat. Um, I had posed to, to myself. And um, I was like, I'm sorry, Liz, I've got to cut this off. Right, there, I had posed to myself, and um, I got very pointed answers. I mean, it wasn't one of those where you have to, oh, I wonder if this applies. No, it was da, 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 da. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. then that that moment of or that few minutes, of being really, really pissed off. Um, that that moment really transcended, or tran- yeah, it did. It transcended into something really mm-hmm. magnificent mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. I got it wasn't just one question, two questions, three questions, but four questions. There were five things that I'd been asking, and they were answered. Plus, I heard some other stuff I didn't even hear before. I didn't know before. So it was really, really good. So in, mm-hmm. I'm saying all of this to say to say this, guys, it, it's simply this, that very much like you, Olivia, um, this year is going to be really honing the um, skills that I have, really, mm-hmm. really honing the manifesting skills that I have. Um, as I said to you, I think, earlier this week or late last week, you know, hence the show, are your life situations sending you important messages? There are things that are going on in my life with people who are on the peripheral, some a little on the, the, the inner circle, but many on the peripheral. Um, it's like, because it is in my life, I am calling it into my life. And so it's for me to really try to figure out what am I showing myself? What am I showing myself? Because at the end of the day, the, the things that are on the peripheral, for me, my judgment call, and I get my judgment call on it, some of them are not so good. So, some of them are not so good. You know, and it, it, it incorporates people going to jail and stuff like this. So, some of it is not good as I see it. And I, I'm not sort of like talking about the person that they're bad because they're not bad people. They're not bad people. They're people who have made choices that don't bear the fruit that I'm thinking that they wanted it to bear. But that's a whole other story in itself. So this is where this this show comes from. The other thing that I want to say is um, this, in addition to honing skills, and as I move along, you know, this show's about choice, which is the first law in the universal laws of attraction. Choice, Choice is everything. If you don't make a choice, it doesn't matter what you do. You know, it'll just be a pipe dream. It'd just be smoke. Uh, and so in, in that, it's about honing your skill as well as you move through, through um, this, this year and beyond. Also, one of the things that is, um, how do I phrase this? Um, one of the things that I am truly passionate about, and that's food. All right, for those of who, you who know me and those of you who don't, those of you who get getting to know me, I'm passionate about food. And one of the things I am bringing this year in spring is food beyond its nutritional value and cooking for, the, cooking for your chakras. Now, there's so much more to food and food than its nutritional value, actually most of which we don't even bloody understand. We've been told, 
And so we repeat it by rote. But there is so much more to food than its nutritional value. There's an intrinsic value to food that many people can benefit from. There's a spirituality to food. There's a, a, a structure to food. That food that um, is in alignment with the body organs and body parts, you know, like carrots, are in alignment with the eyes. They say carrots are good for your eyes. And you wonder why. Oh, they say it's vitamin A. Well, carrots don't produce the most vitamin A. Um, the, the name of the um, fruit vegetable has just gone out of my head. But carrots don't produce the most of it. But yet still, if you cut a carrot into a disc, it represents, it, you look at it, and it resembles the iris and the pupil and, to a certain degree, the lens of the eye, which are structures of the eye. This is so not what this show is about, Liz. <laughs> this is so not what this show is about. <laughs> but that being said, that being said, and also the color. The color, the color interacts with the energy vortexes or the energy systems that we have, known as chakras. They, they tap into our emotional self. The color orange is associated with creativity. And so here you go. In order to see, in order to be creative, you have to be able to see. You have to be able to see your internal eye as well as your external eye. So in this, believe it or not, Carrots can support you with your creativity, not just feeding the body, but it can support you. It also, it also works on things like your, your ovaries and your uterus and your prostate and all this sort of jazz. So this is what I want to bring to people, greater understanding of food and how to cook this bad boy so it tastes good. And so that's one of the things that I'll be doing this year. And, you know, you can tell I'm all jazzed about that. <laughs> in it, <laughs> yeah, laugh, in it. but no, no 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 I'm definitely all jazzed about that so that that being said uh, um, get back to the show first of all guys happy new year and for you guys I'm hoping that you are able to or you are wanting to find some sort of clarity in your life so that you can move forward and create the best life that you can create for yourself that being said are your life situations sending you important messages? And just because the clock ticked over on the 31st of December 2017 and, you know, after midnight, it was 2018, doesn't mean that you haven't been and are not going through and are still going through some of the same situations that you had in 2017. That being said, figuring out the message that your life, your life situation is telling you no matter how hurtful or how joyous, is really a process of decoding. And decoding is a word that you use really a lot when, when we're talking mm -hmm. about having greater understanding of what's mm -hmm. going on in our life. So not to, not to put you on the spot, but decoding, for you, Liv, what, what does that mean for, for our listening audience? Well, for me, it's, it's like, well, when something happens, when, when something um, keeps happening or you're, you find mm -hmm. yourself in a place or a circumstance that you, you seem unable to get out of or reoccurring thoughts that you have all the time, all the time, those are like, those are like messages. Those are, for me, those are like telling you how it is you can get to where it is that you want to be. But the thing about it is you're going to get the message in a way that you can understand. So if it's, um, you know, if it's the reincurring thought about something that happened 25 years ago that keeps coming back, it's getting your attention. You know, if it's you find yourself in a position where, um, say, like, <laughs> okay, you've had an accident or something, and, um, you, you know, you ha you're, you're trying to break, break through the pain barrier, it's telling you something. Um, same as, same as uh, you know, if you find yourself in a situation over it, maybe you're always losing your job or, you know, your partner always leaves you or you always leave your partner or whatever. It's telling you something. And those, uh, and if you can break those down, you can figure out exactly what the blockage is that is stopping you from getting, getting to where it is that you want to be. So it's, so it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's looking at, at looking at the situation, um, you take the emotion out of it. And you look at the mm -hmm. situation for what it is. 
Um, just like you say, like uh, you know the um, the other day you were saying about you know you had problems with electrical stuff. Your, I think the fob mm-hmm. on your um, thing, your your for your car went. Um, mm-hmm. The batteries, mm-hmm. all the batteries for your uh, candles went. My and candles went. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was saying to you that, you know, that was kind of like telling you that the way that your energy is moving isn't conducive to sort of like what it is that you want to achieve. So it was about sort of like making changes to how you see yourself within that situation. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. it's a direct thing because it's not saying, okay, well, um, oh, uh, uh, like it's uh, it's not saying oh it's like uh, what kind of thing? the way that you speak to people or the way that you look at people is telling you specifically it's about your energy, you know. So that's what I'm that's what I mean about about decoding it. You know, you can from from situations you can you can find out what to do, you know. And then it was up to you to decide. Well, okay, now you know that it's about your energy. What can you do? to actually alleviate that situation it's a key that it, it, that's for me that's what it is yeah yeah and i totally agree because as you were saying um it was my computer my, my yeah. um the you know the the fob on, on my my car um the dryer the, the, yeah. i mean it it was just like yeah. one thing after another I'm like oh my god and as you said to me, it's, it's about energy and moving energy. Electricity is about moving energy. Mm-hmm. And so literally what I did live with that was, okay, when you're always talking about people spending their energy, are you, are you spending your energy or are you investing your energy in what you want? And, you know, for me, spending, spending in this instance is, you're doing stuff and you're not getting a return. And what I figured out was I was doing stuff and I wasn't getting the return that I was wanting. So Liz, Mm -hmm. I was doing, you know, Wendy, how can you be binge watching and yet still you expect to get a return on, on a, on a, um, a blog or, or, or a, a YouTube video that you haven't done. And then you're all pissy because, it's not going in the right direction, right? There's movement and you're doing stuff, but it's not the right stuff. I also realized that I needed to um, uh, do a little inhale and exhale and get, get more organized. Things were a little bit too fractured. It was, it was, it was about getting more organized and getting more organized in that, Okay, so you want to binge watch. Okay, well, binge watch, but don't binge watch and then, you know, have a marathon whinge session because you didn't get done what what it is that you had set out to get done, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And and so that's really what I got from that, that my energy, yes, it was moving, but it wasn't moving in the direction that I truly wanted it to move in. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you binge watch and you didn't even like the series. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. That was a waste. And that's the thing. That was a waste of time. Um, and, so, and so, yes, on that score, it, and what it took was, guys, as, as we're talking about this, and I suppose I'm going to repeat myself a little uh, later on in the show. I, I do know this. But what it took for me was literally, I was like, okay, when enough of the beat down, you yeah. actually can't change the fact that, you know, you did a 10 hour binge watch and did absolutely nothing that you know that you need to do that's required, that you have required of self to do it. All right. And it's not like, you know, I've been wor- working balls to the wall and stuff like that. That's not true. That, that is, did I just say that? I did, didn't I? That's, <laughs> not, that's not absolute, that, that's not true. Okay. I have, not been using my time effectively and I do have my shows that I love to watch and this and that because I do and and so it was about okay when enough of the beat down because that's mm-hmm. taking you on another yeah. trajectory that you don't need to go down it's another waste mm-hmm. of your mm-hmm. moving energy mm-hmm. it's a moving energetic violation for me mm-hmm. so it's like okay enough of the beat down when enough stop it 
You know what's happened. You know that you're emotionally charged around this situation. Um, but that being said, what you are truly wanting. So let's take a step back and see what's going on. And, you know, I, I stepped back. I, took, I, I had to take several steps back because I was like, look, you know, nothing's going on, yada, yada, yada. And then I hear, hear my the inner voice say, yeah, well, that's what the problem is. And it's like, mm. well, shut up. Nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, you've got this dialogue going on in, inside your head until su- such point that you literally say, okay, enough, enough. Wendy, what's going on? What can you see that's going on? And just look at it. Don't add any emotion to it. Absolutely no emotion. Just look at it, as we've said on this show many times, just look at it like you're looking at a, a, a black and white movie or, or, or a movie with no sound. What are you seeing? And literally what I saw was this. I am investing my energy that aren't going to give me the return that I want. I'm like, okay. Okay. Well, okay, so you, you, you like, you know, like the blacklist, that's one of my shows. And what I try to do is I don't watch them and then I binge watch. Okay, so you like the blacklist. You know that the new season is coming up and you haven't watched the that last, last seasons yet. So then it comes down to, okay, when to get done everything that you want to do, including watching whatever show it is that you're interested in watching, paint me that picture. Paint me what it looks like to, to have your energy moving in the direction that you want it to move. Instead of electric, electrics going out on you, um, you know, my computer, which is a major, a major thing that I use, you know, going out. Um, my telephone doing some really weird things and blah, 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 blah. Instead of that happening to you or for you, why not you take the ball by the horn so things will run smoothly? And once I kind of came to that, that conclusion and literally started, um, you know, writing stuff out on my, on my um, I'm looking at the board here, on my uh, erase, dry eraser board and, and stuff like that, it felt like a relief. Mm. And it wasn't, it's not like a to-do list. Because I don't like to-do lists per se, but I like a map. I like to create a map of where it is that I'm going. Even if I sort of, you know, come off the beaten path, at least I can get back on track. So it's not a to-do list, guys. It's a map. So I created a map. And I've been, I've been, working, I've been working the map uh, pretty much, you know, um, and then in addition to that, what happens is creativity starts flowing, which was another thing. Energetically, things weren't moving in that direction. You know, I got up this morning and I said to Dee, oh, are you comfortable filming um, yada, 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 this way and that way for this, for this video? And he looked at me like, um, he looked at me like, I know that the right answer is to say yes. <laughs> and I know that, I'm going to be in trouble if I say no. So what I'm going to say to you is I'm not sure. <laughs> That's what I love you. So I, said, so I said to him, well, how about we just do some stuff just round and about so you can get a feel of it, what you need, if you need, you know, like whatever you need, that, that stick thing for your camera to be on and yada, yada, yada. Why don't we do it that way? And he looked mightily relieved. But you see, all this stuff is coming now, Liv. And you know what I'm like? I'm like a steamroller. Let's get it going. Let's move. Let's do it, do it, do it. What you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And so that too has really helped me. Um, It really helped me knowing that my energy wasn't moving conducively and that Mm. that there were hiccups, you know, uh, in the process. So that being said, go ahead, love. The one thing I would say is to be careful that you don't fill what you were do, what you weren't doing with what you are doing. So you're not make you you're not actually doing too much. Yeah. Because one of the things yeah. um that was interesting when you were saying about um when you were driving to work and you had to you were stopped mm-hmm. in the traffic, 
in many ways, you were, you, you were held captive, right? And yeah. therefore, you had, you, you had, you, because of the, the, you, you chose to play, you know, the, the um, audio, to, audio book that you audio. chose to play. You mm-hmm. heard what you needed to hear, but you to had hear. to be yeah. in a place where you were just, there was, no, in a way, there was, there was nothing else for you to do. And yeah. that was the way that yeah. you got your, your own attention or the universe got your own, uh, the, the, you know, your attention. Because, your attention. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, there were blockages in the way, so you weren't actually hearing yourself. You weren't hearing mm-hmm. because you were asking specific questions, but you weren't hearing what. Because I can, I can bet, I can bet that the answers that you got had at, at least fleeted, got gone fleetingly through your mind at some point. Of course, of course, yeah. that, which is how I recognised them. Yeah, which is yeah. how I recognised them, because. Um, they had to, and, and, and that being said, Olivia, for, for, for all of us out there, for every one of us out there, when we ask a question, we actually know the answer because without knowing the answer, when you hear it, you won't know it. And I know that's really difficult for many people to understand, but when you ask a question, when you ask a question, I'm going to phrase it this way, 97% of the time, you actually know the answer actually know the answer because if you don't know the answer you will continue to ask the question until such time you hear something that makes you say ah okay yeah right i got it Hmm. so 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 that being said lives yes i that the answers had fleetingly crossed my way actually several times but i hadn't connected to it yeah, I hadn't yeah. connected to it at all. You know, uh, the, the thing about the thing about um, knowing the answer or recognizing the answer, it's a bit like you know, if you go into the supermarket and you point to mm. an uh, uh, an orange, and mm. you say, "Okay, well that's an apple," and someone says to you, "That's an apple," you're going to say, "No, it's an orange." Because you already mm-hmm. know it's an orange. So therefore, when you mm-hmm. ask when you ask the question, you actually if you didn't know that that was an orange. You wouldn't say, and yes, you have been socialized to believe it's an orange. But when when mm-hmm. it comes to sort of like the, the, your thinking and your, I suppose your spiritual evolution, you know that also. That so yes. so therefore it does. You, you've taught yourself in different. They're different. They're different. They're different things, kind of. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally, Liz. Totally. And you know, let me just say this, guys. Um, because I know sometimes when, when I talk and when you talk, Liv, what I'm going to say is because um, our understanding is, um, because of the deep understanding that we have, when, when, you made, when you said that phrase like that, then you started to, you started to back it up with, with the whole other spiritual side. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when we're talking, guys, we're using generalized terms of understanding. It's a generalized term of understanding because there's always a deeper understanding and then a deeper understanding and then a deeper mm-hmm. understanding mm-hmm. and a deeper understanding to that until um, I remember we were having this conversation, Liz, and this was all oh, maybe about five years ago and we were talking about God. I was at my office and we were talking about God and the universe and we were talking and talking and talking until we got to a point where it was like, well, I don't know where to go from here. There's, do you remember this? I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I I don't I know do. where to go from do. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we yeah. got to a point where it's like, okay, this has got ginormous and where do we go? I don't mm. know. I don't know at this moment beyond mm. that. Mm. And then I was like, anyway, I'll talk to you later. And he was like, bye, <laughs> drive safe. Yeah, I will. <laughs> and we, we, we were done. And I remember it. I remember this clearly. Actually, I think about that quite a lot. That conversation okay. comes to my head quite a lot which yeah. tells me that obviously there's more there for me yeah. there's a message because there's a code. we got to a point yeah. where it's like wow so maybe, that, that maybe, a, maybe, maybe sorry maybe you've reached a point now where you'd be able to add to it as opposed to say well yeah. where do we go now maybe you'd actually know where we'd go now kind of thing you know at least you know part way forward or whatever because I, I think it was one of those questions that mm, yeah, I, 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 you know, to 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 know it all and still be on Earth, I'm not sure if that's possible. Yeah, 
and there you go because that's where it, it, it basically came down to that mm. Mm. it's like mm, you know I'm like, okay I'm going home now okay all right love you sis love you too <laughs> okay, bye. it was it was one of those you know it was one of those those moments but as you as you say Liv um it, it's uh in regard to that um that's a life situation and it's still sending me a message Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I think about this, and I really do. It pops into my head, or I think about it periodically. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but anyway, that that being said, guys, figuring out the message that your life is, your life situation is telling you, no matter how hurtful or joyful, and it's really important to understand that, you know, we live in a world where we think every everything's all happy and you know, blah blah blah, you know, peaches and cream and unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes and all of this jazz and we think that this is um where everything should be but that's not true that's not life life okay we get to determine whether or something whether or not something is hurtful somebody may view unicorns and rainbows depending on where they are from in the world as something hate uh, hurtful and or hateful something hurtful Mm -hmm. Whereas we might see it as something joyous. It's all in how you look at stuff. But that being said, joyous things also teach you about yourself. When you are in a situation and it's bringing you joy, it means that a completion of a cycle has taken place and you have created a foundation upon which to stand to continue on in your journey. Yeah. Yeah. When you are in a situation that brings you something hurtful, it means, or you're perceiving it as hurtful, it means that you are in a place where growth is going to take place, learning is going to take place, so that you can then go to the next level. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, Mindy. Yeah, yeah. Because even joy is like, um, I think when you have a sense of joy, or happiness, or euphoria, it's when you are more connected to your spiritual self. Yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is, and so, I, which, so is guys, why, which is why it happens. Yeah, sorry, go. No, and, and you're right, which is definitely why it happens. You see, everything that happens in your life is sending you a message, and they're all important. And really, again, as I said in the synopsis, which I actually haven't read yet, but really, it's a process of decoding it. And for you... Just like me, just like Olivia, just like everybody, it takes practice. And it takes practice not to continually fall into that emotional cycle of highs and lows. You know, like I said to you at the beginning of the show, you know, I started out and I was was having this conversation like, you know, okay, when blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, you need to shut the beep up. What do you know? You don't know Mm. the troubles I've had. (laughs) <laughs> you know, like the song yeah no, yeah yeah nobody knows the troubles I'm, yeah and so it, it, it's really important to understand that you will go through these and it takes practice it takes practice so when you, it, when you, it, you have a sorry I, what I was no, going to say ahead, was, was going back to joy you know uh, when we have something that um is is going the wrong way we can actually you know we'll look at it whether it's positive or negatively we'll actually look at it but invariably when we feel joy euphoria happiness we tend not to really we tend to leave it where it is as opposed to um interpreting it so it was going back to what you said you know there's a message in that as well in the you joy. know and yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that um, one of the reasons why we tend not to do it is because when someone, when something's good happened to someone, and um, you know they'll be talking to someone, and they'll say, "Okay, well, uh, oh this," and I wonder if that, and I wonder if that, and the person will usually say, "Oh, don't overanalyze it; just enjoy it." And I mm-hmm. think that's mm-hmm. why it's like okay, and also there's the thing, I don't know, we kind of like socialized also, I think, to to believe we shouldn't be happy. Yeah. Um, so we so therefore the, driving for happiness. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So therefore there's, I think that that also comes into play. But um, interpreting joy is just as important um, as interpreting. As, as uh, the hurt. Yeah. Or anything, disappointment, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. 
um, is mm-hmm. just as important because mm-hmm. you can learn something from it. It's just as you can decode something when it's not going right. You can decode something when it is going right. And actually, when it is going mm-hmm. right, it's going to propel you, I would say, further forward because you're more connected to your spiritual self anyway. So it would be easy to mm-hmm. interpret, easier to interpret than if you were actually feeling um, in a detrimental way about what's happening. Yes. Because when you when you're in the lows of whatever emotional grip you're in, it's it's being able to, as we said at the beginning of the show, or as you said at the beginning in the show, to be able to actually choose to take that step back so that you can observe rather than um, mm-hmm. be you the. the the observer, you have to, instead of being the observed, you have to observe. And so, you know, your emotional roller coaster, as I have here written in the synopsis, will actually keep the situation negatively or positively charged. And you get to choose this. You actually choose this. And that results in smoking mirrors, uncertainty, and or confusion. And that can be a challenge when you're making a, a choice in the best interest of self. It can truly be a challenge. Or if you're trying to make choices that are going to manifest you want in your life, as we were talking about earlier. See, what you need is that step back I was speaking of, that, that ability to step back. It means you need to be objective. Mm-hmm. You have to be objective. And without objectivity, without being able to be, to be, uh, to, to witness it, but not be in it, even though it has happened to you and is happening to you, without that objectivity, it becomes virtually impossible to decode any situation in your life because you'll be too caught up in the, the emotional stuff that's going on, the smoking mirrors, the highs, the lows. You know, the, the, the conversation, as I started out earlier, and I'm being really serious, you know, I have conversations with myself, and sometimes I listen to my conversations, and I say to myself, wow, when? <laughs> if anybody heard what was going on, wow, really? You know, <laughs> and so it's, it's really important to understand that there are certain things that will need to be in place for you to do what it is that you need to do. Silence is an, uh, is an amazing thing. Creating internal silence is an amazing thing. It creates a pathway for you to be able to really view your life. So your decoding process starts with you being able to emotionally detach from your situation, yet remain involved enough to be connected. Uh, and as you Olivia know when... and myself are co- uh, wait, hold on just a second. As <laughs> okay. Olivia and myself are coaches, right? We call that de- uh, um, uh, detached involvement. Shirley, I think Shirley's on the line. As a coach, we call that detached involvement, and that's what we need. We need to be detached yet involved. And as intrinsic coaches, we know this, and this is a skill that we we are personally, individually trying to hone for self and um, sharing with other people, hoping that they'll hone it. Do you remember what you were going to say, darling? Um, yes, I do. Thank you very much. Um, one <laughs> of the things I would say, going back <laughs> to um, observation, you know, observation changes circumstances. It changes outcomes. And that is a scientific fact. Okay. So obs- mm-hmm. if you look at um, mm-hmm. the double split experiment, you know, it, observation changes it how it changes it is kind of up to you whether it's a positive change or a not so positive change but the more you observe it the the more the more the circumstance is going to change so the more you observe it positively that's what's going to happen the more you observe it in not so positive way that's what's going to happen and the the thing of changing circumstances by observation is actually not just a spiritual fact it's actually a scientific fact a scientific fact and um, the, uh, you you use the word observation, and that's really that's actually a really good word to interject. It you know in place of objectivity, you need to be able to observe. You need to be able to observe your situation and observe it without 
the emotional charge that we all have. Mm. And, and let's face it, um, if you feel hard done by, if you feel hurt, if you feel whatever, it, whatever the emotion you are feeling that, that feeds into disappointment and, um, you know, the, the, your expectations not being met, whatever it is, you know, that how the hell could they do this to me, you know, or why is this happening? Why, 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 why is the political structure of countries the way that it is? Why is there all this turmoil? Why can't people just be happy, blah, 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 whatever it is, whatever it is, it is so easy to keep the charge going. And when mm. you keep the charge going, what happens, you, 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 you spiral off into other things. You spiral off into... Um, oh, I don't know. Um, oh, that always happened to me. Even as a kid, that's how people would treat me. And I don't even know why I was born and blah, 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 blah. And you, you've, got, you've just gone somewhere that so totally, it's not random. Hear me clearly. It's, I was going to say random. But you've gone somewhere in truth and honesty that needs to be looked at, if the truth be known. It needs to be looked at. But that being said, it will take you off course. It will take you... Um, it will take you off course. It will take you a- a- along a pathway that ah, unless you actually make a choice to do something about it, mm-hmm. i.e. look at it and tell so you can see what this situation is telling you. Even if the situation is telling you, you really need to let this. You, you, it, you, you have to do something. Guys, I, I, I don't know. Your life is about you and your choices. Nobody can make choices for you. Nobody can make your life right. Nobody, nobody can actually heal you, contrary to what people are saying, contrary to what, what has been said. And I've said this on, on, on several shows. I've said this on several shows. Hold on, guys. I need to put this thing in here. Right. I've said this on several shows. You know, um, if you if you take an aspirin, I take an aspirin, we both have a headache, a yada, 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 the aspirin works for me, but it doesn't work for you, why not? Or vice versa, why not? You know, people say things like um, a, a, a smoking causes cancer. Well, if that was the truth, if that was the bona fide truth, everybody who ever inhaled a cigarette, they would have cancer. So your life is an individual thing. And as it unfolds, it's really important to look at you as an individual. You see, your life situations are sending you important messages. Now, if I look at your life situation, if I look at your life situation, it is me observing or looking at your life situation. So my interpretation of it will be whatever I need to get from the situation. It will show me something because I'm looking at the situation through my eyes. So again, your decoding process literally starts with you making the choice followed by the intention, followed by paying attention to that intention to say, okay, I'm not going to bust out crying. I'm not going to want to kick somebody, drop kick somebody based on what, what you know, the, 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 the image or the, the movie that's running through my mind. I'm not going to do that. I am making a choice to look at this and ask the question, what am I being shown? Or what is this situation showing me about me? Yeah. And you see, many people find it so hard to ask that question because, you know, guys, when you ask that question, you take ownership. When you take ownership, you take responsibility. And when you take responsibility, you take accountability or you now become accountable for your life. It's so easy to blame people when your life goes to hell in a handbasket. It's so easy to blame people when your health goes to hell. To, to hell in a handbasket. What were you going to say, Donnie? I'm sorry. Um, what I was going to say. 
What I was. No, what I was going to say was, you said, um, you were saying something about looking at um, other people's situation. And, you know, mm-hmm. we can only we can only interpret that situation, as you said, from our perspective. So when something's happening to someone else, what you're actually doing is reading their messages. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit, you know, I suppose maybe socialization, I don't know. That's a little bit unethical, right, to read someone, else, uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, someone else's messages. So, and invariably, if, if that was going down, it would be most probably because, because there was an element of distrust, uh, you mm-hmm. know, to be reading someone's messages. So what you're actually saying to yourself when you're sort of like looking at someone's life and saying okay well this is happening that shouldn't be happening what you're actually saying is you have a lack of trust in yourself that's what that boils that 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 code right there that's what that boils down to because you're reading someone all right you've got, you've got to elaborate but, you've got you've, you've, you've got, got to reading, elaborate if, for me a bit yeah, okay okay if you're looking at someone else's life Okay, and you're saying, mm-hmm. okay, well, this is wrong. That is wrong. That bit, that is wrong. Okay, with that. Okay, mm-hmm. you are. Re- mm-hmm. Those are messages for that yeah. person, yeah. right? You can't yeah. interpret them because they're messages for that person. So if you are mm-hmm. actually trying to sort of like tell, dictate to the person what they should do because you're looking at their life, what you're actually doing is reading someone else's messages. Okay, so if you take mm-hmm. a, 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 the the, tel, the um, uh, what do you call it? you call it cell phone uh, or the mobile phone, mm-hmm. and you read someone else's mm-hmm. messages, or if you go on the internet and you, you know you read someone else's mm-hmm. um, emails, or if you hack into mm-hmm. another person's program or whatever it is, that's that mm-hmm. is a little bit unethical. That's like reading someone else's messages. So what you're actually yes. uh, and why people would usually because there's an element of fear, but there's also an element of distrust. OK, because mm-hmm. you're reading someone else's messages. Why are you reading someone else's messages? It's not they're not yours. Right. So mm-hmm. what you're actually saying to yourself is that you actually lack trust in your own abilities. Self. Just, it, yeah. Self. It, yeah. In okay. your own self. It doesn't mean you don't have them. It just means you are you don't have faith in your own self. And that was just a breakdown mm-hmm. of um, what you had said. Yeah. And the other okay. thing I want to right. Keeping the because uh, you said about uh, being emotionally charged. I can't remember exactly what you said, but what I wrote down was keeping the emotions, uh, keeping the emotional charge going, changes the mm-hmm. trajectory of the outcome. Yeah. So as you, you, you actually you actually alluded to it because it goes off in in a different direction. So yeah. Anyway. You 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 go off you go off on tangents. Yeah. You go on off on tangents. Uh, I mean because again. Um, when when it's it's okay the joyous situations, but in in situations where you've experienced disappointment, in you know hurt, loss, anything that is looked upon as a deficit, and hear me guys, there are no deficits in your life. There are just situations how you choose to look at them, and what you choose to do with what's going on. Okay, so. It's easy to, as I said before, to stay emotionally charged because what it does is it allows you the autonomy to make the choice not to choose to do something. This is why, you know, I've met so many people who are in relationships that they need to get out of. But as Olivia said, I'm reading, I'm reading that. That's what I'm reading. That's what Mm. I read. That's what I see. That's what I read. That's what's Mm. written. Mm. But I'm seeing it. But are you seeing it? And the most important person in any equation in life is you. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. For those of you who have never had that experience, if you are in a situation that literally is sucking the life out of you. This is whether this is an emotional thing or a, a, a physical thing. You understand when I say the most important person in an equation, your equation of life is you because it's happening to you. So as you actually take time out, moving forward through this year at your life situation, as Olivia said here, as Olivia said here, she said also about the reoccurring situations, reoccurring thoughts. 
These are things that are getting your attention. These are the things that are saying to you, hey, look, something's going on here. And ironically, while the situation in the heart of it, the core of it, is telling, is giving you the message, you have to choose to drill, to dig, to get it. You are the one who has to make that choice. And that choice is the intention. That choice is the intention, followed by the attention in doing what you need to do for you. You know, life, life is always happening for us. It, and we say this on the show all the time. Your life is unfolding for you. Your life isn't happening to you. Your life is happening for you because of you and, and not in spite of you or to spite you. Your life isn't happening to hurt you. Your life is happening for you so that you can make the choices that you need to make, that you must make, so that your life can manifest the way that you want it to live. And in that same breath, I'm going to say to you guys, I'm saying this, and I know, I know, Wendy knows, from personal experience, sometimes it's a damn hard challenge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a challenge that will bring you to your knees. Sometimes it's a challenge that will lay you flat out on your back. But understand me when I say, having had a near-death experience, Life is happening for you. Life doesn't want to hurt you, but life will use hurt because that's one thing that we people, we human beings, one thing we, we actually respond to, the stimulus of pain, emotional, physical, psychological, we respond to that. And so life will use the universal creative, universal source, the God within, the goddess within, whatever phrase you want to use, God, Christ, Buddha, Muhammad, whatever you want to use, will use the thing that will get your attention and hold it. It will get mm. your attention and hold it the quickest. Because quiet as it's kept, your time here is not infinite. It's running and passing. It's running and passing. And you came here to do something, something special, something that only you can do. You came here for a reason, and that reason is unique to you. Every one of us is unique. And so, guys, what I would say to you is simply this. Your life is sending you important messages, or excuse me, your life situation is sending you important messages. Have your moment. Have your time where you ride that emotional roller coaster, where you are pissed, where you are mad, where you can be homicidally ticked. Have it where you, you, you have sunk into the abyss with, with the blues. Have it. Have your moment. Don't, don't refuse yourself that. Or don't try to... to um, uh, 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 negate that or, or squash it or make out it doesn't happen, no on the flip side of what we're talking about your emotions definitely play a huge role in you understanding self your emotions that run the gamut from I'm going to say love to hate and everything in between they are showing you something about you they are showing you your likes and dislikes they are also attached to your chakra system. And this chakra system is att uh, attached to your electromagnetic body. And so it goes out. Your emotions are telling you something. But when you don't listen to your emotions and you allow them to run roughshod over you, when you allow your emotions to run crazy, to run riot, and you don't listen, they will continue to run crazy and riot until you do listen. And what happens is, the universal creator, known to me as God, or whomever your chosen deity is, I'm an equal opportunist, so whomever your chosen deity is, will lay you out flat. And I mean lay you out flat. So all you can do is, you, you're laid out so flat, you can't, you can't even focus on the TV. 
so that you can look at your life's situation and figure out what life is telling you. And, you know, more often than not, as I said, you, 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 you do need to do the work. But more often than not, the life situation is telling you a do or don't. And that's a God's honest truth. Don't go left, go right. Don't do this anymore. Do that. Or don't, it, 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 it as Olivia says, simply complex. Simply complex. Look at it. Be emotionally charged, then choose to make the decision to ask yourself, okay, and acknowledge, I'm really hurt by this, but I'm going to put the hurt aside for now. What is this situation really telling me? What is the message that this situation is giving me? Because it's giving me something that's pertinent, and this information can assist and support me in manifesting or moving forward in my life. So, Liz, as we as we wrap up, uh, many, 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 many people say, "Oh, well, it's happening because of this person. This person did that, and that person did the other." Oh, and and oh. you know, it goes back to what you said before: like, um, life is happening for you, and it's not happening to you. Because really, I, mean, I say this pretty often: if you weren't here, would you be mm-hmm. in that situation? Well, no, exactly. Because you wouldn't. You wouldn't be here. So it's because exactly. of you that you are experiencing that situation. And that's something you need to think about. It's because of you. Of because you. Of, because of you. You are the common denominator within that mm. situation. And that, whatever situation, good, bad, or indifferent, you have to realize your majesty, your power within that. Come on. Because you, cre- you, you created it because you are here. So therefore, you can uncreate it. Or you can get the best out of because it. Because you are here. Move. Yeah, exactly. You are the common denominator. Yeah. If you weren't here, you wouldn't be experiencing it. But because you are here, you are experiencing it. So it's up to you. There you go, guys. And it is up to you. So guys, your life situation are sending you important messages, decode them. Take the time, practice, and decode them. It will change your life. It will change your life. So I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of My Life, My Choice. You've been listening to Are Your Life Situations Sending You Important Messages? I know they are. You know they are. Listen to what you were telling self listen to what you're telling. So Liv, thank you guys for tuning in today, Liv. And thank I've you, been heart. Olivia Lashley from London in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and just, I'm I'm just Dr. saying, Wendy okay. Dearborn. <laughs> I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn from um, Las Vegas. I was going to say from Tottenham. I'm Dr. Wendy <laughs> Dearborn from, um, L- here I go, London, from, from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week with another show. Until next time, guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Peace. Thanks for listening. Love you, Shell. Bye. Bye, Shelley. See you next time.